within the core facilities at the Center for Drug Discovery and Innovation at the University of South Florida is a bridge to world-changing research and life-saving discoveries. The Institute creates a culture of discovery, initiating new sources for developing new cures. The collaborative research underway at CDDI covers all aspects of the drug discovery process, divided into specialized labs that focus on each step. Initiating discovery begins with identifying small molecules within extracts from numerous different sources and screening those small molecules against certain disease biomarkers or targets. Jim Leahy is a chemistry professor at USF and a lead researcher at CDDI. So CDDI is designed to be an institute that will do drug discovery, everything from finding targets that are of use, finding molecules that will serve as potential drugs, and then trying to optimize those uh, molecules so that they are active and have good pharmacokinetic properties. To effectively evaluate those properties that will make the molecule viable for a potential drug, researchers have to explore the compound on many levels. Various aspects of the center contribute to ongoing research throughout the USF campus by providing the natural compounds for screening, as well as shared expertise and highly specialized equipment. Partnerships include research students from the College of Arts and Sciences, College of Engineering, College of Medicine, College of Pharmacy, and the College of Public Health. The branches of the facility offer access to instrumentation that otherwise would not be available, providing technology that will help researchers discover clues to cures. We bring those chemicals back to the lab here, and we want to know if they're drugs. At the heart of the discovery process is marine chemist Bill Baker, who began Antarctic Ocean explorations more than 20 years ago. Baker has been studying marine chemistry and collecting specimens like tunicates, sponges, and corals from deep in the ocean in order to sample the properties against diseases. So when we're in the field, we're studying the ecology. When we're in the lab, we're looking at sort of drug discovery. Over the years, Baker and his team have traveled to the depths of the world, scuba diving in the frigid waters of the Antarctic and also the mild waters off of the Florida Keys in order to gather a wide specimen pool to extract potential cures. According to Baker, the Antarctic sponges, corals, and tunicates live near the ocean floor and have evolved over time to develop chemical defense systems. So these chemical defenses, they're either toxic or noxious to these potential predators. So, so somehow these predators have receptors, you know, whether they're taste buds or whether they're, they're physiological receptors in their tissues, they're biological receptors, which is the same thing that drugs do. Drugs interact in people with your, with your biological receptors. So the receptors in these defensive situations are not that different than receptors in disease states. So the fact that a, a chemical defense for a sponge has activity against cancer is not all that surprising. The quest for new and different compounds continues to bring researchers to the far end of the earth. Baker and a team of marine scientists recently returned from an expedition to the Antarctic Sea to conduct deep sea trolling in order to gather samples of specimens with a greater biological diversity. So again, you, you know, in, in, in order to, to find a molecule that exquisitely binds in your biological receptor, you've got to screen hundreds, thousands of compounds to find one or two hits that they can then sort of develop into a, a pharmaceutical. They've developed an extensive library in the chemodiversity lab at CDDI, which preserves numerous specimens at a sub-zero temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius. It's that historical collection of natural compounds that can be screened and tested against certain disease models or biomarkers in order to establish activity. When you develop a library for drug discovery, you want to sample a lot of chemical space. As the library of potential compounds expands, the interconnectivity between researchers and the answers that may lead to new cures continues to build. Once compounds have been identified as active, there is an extensive process to optimize the potential effect of the molecule. Medicinal chemists like Jim Leahy work to create the most applicable form of the compound possible. One of the things that we have to do is we have to identify compounds that not only hit the target that we want, but that stick around in the body long enough to do what we want it to do, but don't stick around too long. So you want drugs to get in, do their job, and get out. Chemists work to optimize the way that the molecule will interact with the human body in every way. Characteristics like selectivity, solubility, and cost. Once a molecule is tested within a protein to determine its activity, 
or virtually docked using a computer program. It can then be synthesized. Of these possibilities, this one looks pretty good. And then one of the things that we do then is go into the lab and, and pick a few of those and say, well, which of these can we synthesize reasonably quickly to be able to test our hypothesis of whether it's going to be active? Then we do protein purification and um, isolation and proteomics so that we can then get enough of the material to be able to then set up the assay that we would then use for screening. The proteomics lab specializes in identifying the structures and functions of the proteins by separating the molecules with mass spectrometry isolation. The process of discovering new drugs for the treatment of cancer, Alzheimer's, infections, and malaria is typically contained within the university setting because of the culture of exploration. The initial exploratory research is encouraged in a setting such as this. A pharmaceutical company then enters the process after confirmation of viability. So, you know, that's another thing that is driving a lot of um, drug discovery into academic uh, laboratories and why CDDI is in many ways ahead of the curve in trying to establish a, an institute where we can do all of those sorts of things and then collaborate with um, pharmaceutical companies to, to sort of develop the drugs that we're discovering here.